Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back to day two. Another video. It is the game preview. Everton taking on Arsenal this Sunday. 4.30 kickoff at Goodison Park. Football is back or at least proper football is back. The Premier League is back and of course Everton are back with... No doubt their toughest test of the season thus far. Playing Arsenal aside that pushed Manchester City all the way last season until the very last few weeks of the season. Contenders for the title, potential contenders for the title again this season. They've started pretty well, three wins and one draw in their four games so far. Ten points, of course, with a uh, goal difference of bang on zero. They've conceded four and they have scored four. Uh, sorry, they, uh, a goal difference of four. They've scored eight goals and they've conceded four goals. So scored double the amount that they have conceded. I read that wrong there. Sorry. Um, and yeah. Like I said, without doubt for me, uh, the most difficult game of the season thus far. And one that Everton really need to be getting something out of. Obviously, we spoke quite in depth over the international break about the start of the season. The defeats to Wolves and Fulham at Goodison Park. Okay, we had that defeat to Aston Villa as well and that draw to Sheffield United. But specifically for me, I, I think highlighting those defeats at Goodison against teams that we should have been beaten is really what uh, you know ultimately is, has been the most frustrating thing about this season so far I'm not really that bothered about the Villa results again I'm not happy about it but it's one of them and the Sheffield United results uh, again could have gone a different way either way dependent on certain decisions or certain moments in the game but it's those home fixtures against Fulham and Wolves that really sort of stick in your throat as two games that Everton should have been winning um, and you know I know that might sound disrespectful and I know sometimes we, people can be a little bit conservative when they say things like this but Everton should have won both of those games without a doubt not only on the balance of play but also on the fact that they were two home fixtures against two poor teams teams that uh, you know we, we should be looking to take points off and the fact that we lost both of them puts even more emphasis on, on this game against a really really tough opponent. Arsenal obviously before the international break beat Manchester United 3-1 late win there uh, you know in that game it was one all up until the, the very end and then Arsenal scored a couple of late goals there. Draw was against Fulham a two all draw with Fulham the week prior to that and obviously they beat Aston Villa away from home on their first away game of the season and their first home game of the season. Uh, they obviously beat Nottingham Forest 2-1. Also won the Community Shield as well. <coughs> Uh, the weekend before the season against Manchester City, of course. Uh, so that was a, a big result for them. And this will, without a doubt, be an incredibly, incredibly difficult game of football for Everton Arsenal, uh, as I said, a, a top side, a side that, you know, we're massively, massively um, better last season than they were the season before. I don't think anybody at the start of last season would have had Arsenal as a team that were going to challenge for the title, but just so happens that they were the only team that challenged Manchester City last season, and although Manchester City ultimately come back and, and, and won the league, and, and obviously won the, the FA Cup and the uh, Champions League as well, Arsenal were leaders of the league for a long, long time and really, really pushed them you know, to the uh, to the latter stages and it was just in those games, you know, in April, May time that, you know, that Arsenal obviously slipped up a little bit through maybe a lack of experience, maybe a lack of squad depth, maybe a lack of, you know, winners in that team, whereas Manchester City, we know, of course, are, are a team that are filled with winners and players that know how to win silverware. Arsenal have only strengthened in this summer transfer window. As I said, they were fantastic last season and they've only gotten better uh, over the last sort of two, three months of the transfer window, bringing in players like Declan Rice, who <coughs> for me is a, is a fantastic signing, uh, an incredible midfield player, one of the very best in the world. And, you know, to bring him in, off the back of a trophy winning season for him to strengthen their chances of, again, sort of challenging for the title, I think is a big move by Arsenal. Obviously, they've brought the likes of Yori and Timber in as well, who's a little bit of a, a, a of a, an unknown quantity in, in terms of obviously of Premier League football I know a lot of people will have watched them over in the Dutch League and, and have been impressed with him there but in terms of being able to come in <coughs> to the Premier League and, and reach those levels he, he is you know uh, an unknown quantity but he's you know obviously he's injured at the moment but he's done well uh, in his in his first couple of games he looked okay Kai Havertz which is you know again one of those transfers that may end up looking like a brilliant bit of business may end up looking like a complete waste of money but he's definitely someone with talent he's definitely someone with ability and obviously 
uh, the likes of David Raid has, has, has come in as well to challenge uh, Adam Ramsdale, which just shows the mentality of, of Mikel Arteta and the attitude of Mikel Arteta. You know, there was a lot of conversation last season about Adam Ramsdale being the best goalkeeper in the league. Mikel Arteta obviously felt something a little bit different and therefore wanted to go and bring in somebody else to either replace him or give him a bit of a kick up the arse. We, we obviously don't know which one of yet, but, you know, it, you don't need me to sit here and tell you how, how good of a team Arsenal are and, and how difficult of a game this will be for Everton. The one sort of, <clears throat> I suppose, leaning positive you can have going into this game as an Evertonian, as Arsenal don't have a great record at Goodison Park in recent years. Everton, I think, have won five out of the last six games at Goodison Park against Arsenal. Uh, and whilst that might be a bit of a good omen going into this one because Arsenal are often the team that we play at the end of a bad run. We'll play Arsenal and we'll all sit in and think, oh my God, we're going to get absolutely battered today and we end up turning up and winning. We've done that last season under Sean Dice. We've done it, you know, seasons and seasons prior where <clears throat> it's almost been the worst game on paper going into it, but the best game in terms of the outcome because we often get a, a positive result. However, that obviously <coughs> means very, very little going into this game tomorrow. Um, sorry, going into this game on Sunday. You know, records ultimately are there to be broken, and I don't think those Arsenal players will be losing any sleep over the last couple of days about the fact that they haven't had a great record at Goodison in recent years. I think they'll be looking at this as, you know, coming up against the side that have struggled so far in the Premier League, um, and that ultimately are going through a lot of different things off the pitch at the moment. We've heard about the takeover news today. We spoke about that earlier on in today's live stream. And, and, and I think Arsenal maybe will be looking at this game as an opportunity to pick up a, a, an important three points for them because it would be. Um, but for me, from an Everton standpoint and from a Sean Dyche standpoint and, and, and this Everton team, we need to win a game of football. You know, we, we, we are yet to win a Premier League game of football this season. <clears throat> um whilst we can look at this game and go <coughs> pardon me whilst we can look at this game and go well we're playing Arsenal on Sunday so we're very unlikely to win this one as well we can't keep saying that uh, about games of football we need to win one uh, you know eventually and, and 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 although this Arsenal team is a very good side and a side that could easily and are quite you know quite capable of turning up on Sunday and wiping the floor with Everton they're also a team largely made up of players that have shown that when they come to Goodison in previous years and the pressure's on them and the crowd are on them and the manager gets it right and tactically gets it right that you know, they are uh, ultimately a, a beatable side. And that's exactly what Sean Dice did the last time he faced Arsenal at Goodison Park, his first game in charge of Everton. Everton had been in an absolutely terrible, terrible run of form with Frank Lampard this time last year. Uh, or, sorry, this time... <coughs> about six or seven months ago. Um, we hadn't won a game of football for God knows how long. I think it was October and this was January at this point. Um, we'd only gotten one point since then, which ironically was against Manchester City at the Etihad. Um, Sean Dyche had come in, his first game was Arsenal at Goodison, Arsenal were unbeaten in something like 15 games or something, brilliant form, and it was almost like a, a poison chalice, and I remember sitting here doing that preview and saying, well, you know what, this is, you know, we won't sort of judge Sean Dyche based upon this game, because it's almost certain that we're, we're not going to get anything from it, we turned up on the day, we get a goal, James Tarkowski, good header, and, and we, you know, we end up doing some decent bits of defending, and we come away with all three points on that day, and, and ultimately it was a massive, massive three points uh, in, 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 in the game grand scheme of things for, for the entirety of last season. So um, <clears throat> there is positives going into this one. The manager has had his pre-game press conference today. He's spoken about Dominic Calvert-Lewin and said he should be available and back in the team. He did mention Jack Addison as well. He said Jack is back on the grass, but unfortunately will not be available for this one on Sunday. It's just a little bit too soon for him. And he said Beto's settling in well again. Lewis Dobbin is back. Jared Branthwaite is back. Nothing wrong with either of them. So <clears throat> we pretty much have got a full strength squad in terms of for what we know obviously we've still got you know as I said Jack Harrison out obviously we've still got Seamus Coleman out obviously you know there's still a couple of players that are near some long-term injuries but in terms of Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Janet Branthwaite players that there might have been question marks around they obviously are fit and available for this one, which is a massive, massive boost because Everton are going to need our, our best team uh, and our best performance if, if we are to beat this Arsenal side. The manager ultimately has got to get it right. Uh, <coughs> I think he's had games this season where he hasn't got it right and where he's got it monumentally wrong. And I think there's been time for this season where he has got it right and Everton have looked better for that. Um, the decision for me ultimately going into Sunday will be 
Is it better or is it Dominic Calvert-Lewin that starts this game? Or is it both, personally, for me? If it was a choice between one or, or, or the other, I would quite like to see both in the team. I know people have expressed concerns about them being very similar and there being, you know, not enough sort of agility up there if they're both in the team. But <clears throat> if I had to pick one, <clears throat> it would be Beto for me because I think he's impressed in the two games he's played so far. It'll obviously be his debut at Goodison Park as well, which will be fantastic. And he reminds me of somebody that would sort of... Um, you know, would relish in that atmosphere, would relish in the atmosphere of, of you know, 40-odd thousand Evertonians at Goodison Park screaming and shouting and getting behind the team in, in, in what is a huge, huge game of football. And the fans will undoubtedly be up for, up for this game of football. I know there's been a lot of stuff that has gone on behind the scenes over the last sort of 24 hours or so regarding 777. But we ultimately know as a fan base that we need to start winning games of football. And this is one that, although we're playing a very, very good team, and as I said, Arsenal could quite comfortably dispatch of us players like Gabriel Jesus, Bakayo Saka, who I think is an absolutely tremendous footballer, Martinelli, we've already spoke about Declan Rice, Kai Havertz, etc. It, you know, it, 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 it's very possible that Everton walk out of Goldison Park on Sunday evening, haven't lost today or 4-0, but it's also very possible that Everton walk out winners, you know, because we've managed to get a, uh, you know, snatch a goal and then defend really well for 90 minutes, and ultimately... That has to be the goal going into this one, and, and, and in order for that to, to happen, and in order for that to come true, the manager has to get it spot on with his team selection, he has to get it spot on with his decisions, he has to get it spot on with the substitutes, he has to get it spot on with everything going into this game, um, and we probably do have to rely a little bit on Arsenal having an off day, but that has been, you know, that has happened a number of times over the years at Goodison where we've played really, really well, and Arsenal haven't been able to, to deal with that, or just haven't wanted to deal with that, so... Um, yeah, I'd be lying to you if I was to say I'm confident. The only air of confidence from me is coming from the fact that Arsenal haven't won at Goodison for so long or have only won once in so many years at Goodison. But the reality of the situation is is those records mean very, very little. If Arsenal turn up and beat us 4-0 uh, you know, on Sunday, then next season when they come to Goodison, if they do, hopefully Everton in the Premier League, nobody's saying, oh, well, it was only last season they beat us. You know, it, it goes out the window. So, yeah, like I said, I, <coughs> I'd be lying if I was to say I was confident, I'd be lying if I was to say I, I was going into this game thinking, yeah, Everton are going to win this game comfortably. <clears throat> However, we've got to believe, and ultimately these players and this manager have got to believe going into this one that they can, you know, they can get something out of this game. And if they don't believe that, and they should believe that in every game of football that they go into, because if they don't, then what's the point? What's the point? If these players don't go into games, every game, regardless of who we're playing and where we're playing, thinking, I think we'll win today, then there's no point. If they're going into it thinking, oh, we, we're probably going to lose this one or, we, you know, we mightn't get anything, then you may as well not turn up unless you're going to go in on on, on, on the sort of, um, <coughs> it's not a cockiness or an arrogance, it's just a, a, <coughs> a sort of belief in yourself that, that you can go and win a game of football and, and Everton are more than capable of, of winning a, a game of football against anyone in the Premier League and we've showed that time and time again even when we've been in a terrible run of form like we were last season when we faced Arsenal we proved that we could turn up and we could beat them so yeah it, it will be a difficult game that is absolutely goes without saying in, in terms of team news for me I would go with Jordan Pickford in goal uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory I would go with I don't know. I, I I think he's more than likely to go with Ashley Young. Vitaly Mikhailenko did play relatively well uh, in, in, in the international games against England and, and I believe in their other international game as well. Um, <clears throat> but I just have this feeling that uh, the manager just doesn't like, um, you know, just, just doesn't like Vitaly Mikhailenko and just doesn't prefer him and prefers Ashley Young over him. So it'll probably be Ashley Young. For me, it's got to be Branthwaite and Tarkowski as the centre-backs. That is absolutely non-negotiable. And if it's anything other than that, for any other reason than an injury, um, then, I, again, I think Sean Dice is putting himself in the in the window for being sacked. And I, and I know you might go, oh, don't be silly, Cam, that's too exaggerative. But I'm being genuinely serious. The centre-back partnership has to be Tarkowski and Branthwaite. Uh, right back... It will be Nathan Patterson. I, I know he's not being great recently and there's been some calls for James Garner to fit back in there in the absence of Seamus Coleman. But again, <clears throat> if Nathan's fit and Nathan's available, I, I can't see him not being played in, in, in that natural position. Uh, midfield, I would have Onana in the six. Now I know <clears throat> he obviously played there for Belgium and I understand that, like I said, um, you know, the other day, <clears throat> 
international football at that level when it when it's when in terms of friendlies obviously it's different when it's tournament football but in terms of friendlies international football isn't obviously at, you know the greatest level in terms of quality but i i think we can all sort of say that Amadou Onana is a number six he's most natural in that position he looks most you know he looks most comfortable in that position he looks best in that position um and therefore he should be being played in that position for Everton going forward a, a further if a, a ahead of him I'd probably have Garnet as in um as in Garner Gay and Decore in there as well I know that maybe is a little bit harsh on James Garner and I, I get that and and again I'm, I'm not Decore's biggest fan but I think I said this after Sheffield United at the moment. I just look at James Garner and I just think, what you know, you're a tidy little footballer, all right. You, you know, you're comfortable on the ball. You're not too bad. But generally, what what do you bring that's an outstanding feature to this team? And I struggle to answer that question at the moment. I'm not saying he will never do that. I'm not saying he's not a good player. I'm not saying he shouldn't be in the starting eleven. I'm just saying, ultimately, one of those players is going to be dropped, isn't it? Who is it more likely to be? I think it's more likely to be James Garner. And then up front, I'd have Dan Juma one side. I would have Beto up front, and I would probably have Dwight McNeil on the other side if if fit and available. Which the hope is that he will be fit and available. We know that um, Jack Harrison isn't going to be for this one, but if if Dwight is 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 available and fit, and obviously we've seen him come off the bench against Sheffield United, and he we will have had a couple of weeks of training since then. Then I'd have him there, Dan Juma on the side, Beto uh, up front, and then Dominic Calvert-Lewin on the bench, ready to come on on 60, 70 minutes if need be. So, yeah, for me, that would be my starting eleven. The manager might go with Dominic Calvert-Lewin and put Beto on the bench and say, listen, this fella's our number one starting striker, and when he's fit, he plays. He might go with James Garner at right wing and, 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 and you know, <coughs> leave, I don't know, McNeil on the bench. Who knows? Who knows? We will ultimately <coughs> wait and see on Sunday afternoon. But yeah, this will be a, a difficult game. That that goes without saying. Um it's a tough task. Arsenal are a very, very good side and, and as I said they've had a pretty faultless start of the season. Oh they had that draw with Fulham but other than that they've had a pretty faultless start of the season and they will be wanting to continue that good start um on Sunday. So it's up to Everton to disrupt that. But not only disrupt that, we're not here to disrupt Arsenal's start of the season and to sort of put a you know a pin in their balloon their, you know their title race balloon and go, ha 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 we're here to get our first win of the season. You know, if we lose on Sunday or okay, in hindsight we might look back and go, Well yeah but we lost to a really good Arsenal team. We won't be saying that on Sunday night. We'll be sitting there saying we've lost another game. That's, you know, four defeats out of five Premier League games. That's not good enough. So, you know, the pressure is on the manager. The pressure is on these players. And ultimately, we've got to turn up and we've got to perform. So, let's hope we can do that. Anyway, we're going to leave it there. If you have enjoyed this one, please, please do leave a like. We will be back uh, over the next few days, obviously, with more videos. We'll be back on Sunday with an instant match reaction and a player ratings. Uh, if you are new, don't forget to subscribe. That would mean a huge, huge amount to me. Go and check out the video we did earlier today about the 777 uh, news. 777 agreeing a deal with Farhad Mashiri to take over Everton. Go and check that out. Leave a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you after.